problems, uh, who, who is the first person to solve all the problems will be getting a t-shirt, okay? Uh, okay, am I audible now? Is it is it audible to everyone now? Guys, is it audible now? Uh, okay, okay. So first of all, let us congratulate Akhil, who has been the top performer in the last assignment, who has solved all the problems uh, before everyone else. Okay. Going forward, the person uh, who solves all the problems in the assignment, uh, who is the first person to solve all the problems in the assignment is going to get a t-shirt from us. Okay. So you can win a t-shirt. If you solve all the, if you are the first person to solve all the assignments, okay. Cool. Should we begin? Okay, so today we are going to study merge sort. Okay, now to study merge sort, to understand merge sort and why is it framed in such a way, let us start with a scenario. Okay, so let us say that uh, you are working on a system. The system is very old system. Okay, so you are working on a very old system. System means your computer. Okay, so the computational power of the system is very, very less. Okay. Plus you are also given a function sort, which takes an array and it can sort the array and the time complexity of this function is order n square. Okay, you are not, uh, this function is not implemented using quick sort. This is implemented using maybe bubble sort or insertion sort. So it takes order n square time to sort an array. Okay, now uh, the problem is that since the system is very old and the computation power of the system is very limited, this function cannot run on an array which has got a size greater than 50 okay if you are running the sort function on an array which is which has a size greater than 50 then this will fail because the system is very old okay you have got an array of size 100 you have an unsorted array of size 100 and you have to sort this array in this system using this sort function first of all is it even possible the maximum computation that that the system can do uh, is for a size 50 array right it can run an algo of order n square only for a size 50 array anything more than that is going to crash the system so if you have if you are trying to run uh, the sort function on an array which has size 100 this is not going to run this will fail the system so what can what can be done okay cool so some of you are saying it is possible some of you are saying that this is not possible no no it, it is possible how so uh, okay we, we cannot sort an array of size 100 but we can sort an array of size 50 right so what if what if i just divide my array of size 100 okay so this will be from 0 to 99 okay if i just divide my array into two parts and each part has got a size of 50 can i sort these two so uh, these two halves separately using the sort method 
yes definitely because these are under the limit right these are not uh, these two arrays have got a size equal to 50 so the these can be sorted using the given sorting algo okay so these two halves can separately be sorted but how do i get the original array in sorted order is there a way to do that so now the problem that we have reduced uh, the reduced problem is that we have got two arrays which are sorted right so i can sort this array using the sort method similarly i can also sort this array so now i have got two arrays which are in sorted order and i want to have the combination of both of them in sorted order so what can be done correct we can merge both both of these arrays right so now the problem uh, has been reduced to merging two sorted arrays right have you guys solved this problem already this is a, a relatively easier problem right how to merge two sorted arrays if i am given two arrays and and i have to produce a new array which is a merge of them and that is also sort, sorted in order how to do that so let's take an example let's say we have a uh, one of the sorted arrays a which is having 2 6 9 10 and 12 uh, the other one has got 1 4 5 6 11 14 so these two are independently sorted but i have to produce an array which is the uh, which is the union of these two and that is also in sorted order right so what can be done we will be selecting the first the first element let's say uh, the sorted array is c so the first element of the sorted array will be the smallest amongst all of these elements right now since a and b are already sorted can i say that the first element of this array c will either be the first element of b or b uh, or the first element of one only one of these two are the prospect candidates for the first element of the sorted uh, of the combined sorted array right so instead of comparing all of the elements i can directly compare one and two and whichever is lesser can be put as the first element of the sorted array so since one has been put here now i have got two prospect element for for the race of the second element in this sorted array one of them can be two uh, like either it can be two or it can be four any other element does not stand in the race because we have because these arrays are individually sorted right so if two is available then any other element is definitely going to be greater than two in this array right so we don't need to consider them so this problem as many of you have already mentioned can very easily be solved using two pointers right what we can do is we can just fix two pointers at the start of both of the arrays and we will compare the values at these two pointers whichever is smaller will be kept in the in the array c so first we put uh, first we put one then this pointer will be moved to four now we are comparing two with four so we put put two here so now this pointer will move to six now we are comparing six and four so four is smaller four comes here now this goes here and then five comes here then uh okay now this pointer moves here so both both the pointers are now pointing to same element both are pointing to six which has got same value so now we can choose any of that right so any six can be chosen so let's say that we are uh, choosing this six so now this pointer moves to 11 now this six will be chosen so this pointer comes here now between 9 and 11 we choose 9 and then we choose 10 and then we choose 11 and finally 12 and 14. so just using two pointers we can generate the merged sorted array if we are given two individually sorted arrays right what will be the overall time complexity of this merging operation Correct. the time complexity of this merge operation is going to be order n right so we are we are traveling this array uh, only once and we are traveling this array only once so every element every element of both these arrays is visited exactly once okay 
Cool. So now we have got a method to to produce a, a sorted array if the two halves of that array are sorted, right? Should we should we also quickly see the pseudo code of this thing? Okay. 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 Let's let's see. So let's say that we had we are writing a function merge, which is taking two arrays A and B. So what we are doing is first we are starting the pointers. Uh, let's say i is the pointer which will point to array a and j is the pointer which is going to point to array b okay uh okay then then we declare an array which is going to be the result array or this is going to be the merged uh, sorted array okay and the size of this array should be equal to the size of the two array that are given to us because this will have all the elements which are in a and all the elements which are in b the size is going to be a dot length plus b dot length. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll run a loop and we will see till when we have to run this loop. Okay. If i pointer is pointing to a, the j pointer is pointing to the first element of b. Okay. So what we'll say is that if a of i is less than b of j, which means this element is smaller, then put it in the resultant array. Okay. So we can see C of, now we need a pointer for the resultant array as well, right? So instead of only having I and J, let's also have a K, which will be pointing to the current position in the resultant array, where we have to enter the result. So C of K is going to be K of I. And what do we do after putting it? We increment this pointer. So we can say I plus plus, Similarly, since in the uh, in the resultant array, this place is now occupied. So we will also increment this pointer. So this becomes K plus plus. Okay. Else in any other case, whether uh, B both of them equal to each other or whether B is smaller than A, B J is smaller than A, we will put the element from array B into the resultant array. Okay. And then we will increment the pointer of b and similarly we'll increment the pointer of uh, c as well okay now the question is what should be the breaking condition of this loop till when should we uh, actually continue doing this process Correct. So what, what we are doing is we are incrementing I and we are also incrementing J. What is the maximum point till which I can be incremented? If we are incrementing I in every step, what is the maximum point till which I can be? What is the maximum value that I can take? So I can, the maximum value that I can take is whatever is possible in this array A, right? So if the length of array A is AL, then the maximum value that I can take is AL minus one, because that is going to be the last index of A. Similarly, if B has a length BL, then J can take a maximum value of BL minus one. So we can directly write here that our I should always be less than the length of A, right? Similarly, B, uh, oh, sorry, J should also be always less than the length of array B. Okay. And we'll be taking the end of these conditions because at any point, if I or J reaches the last index, we'll have to stop. Okay. Is this code correct? Is this sufficient to merge the two arrays or we need something else? K not equal to, okay, so will K ever go more than uh, the length of A and B? No, right? Because I is traveling only from zero to the length of A, J is traveling from zero to the length of B. So the resultant will always be, this will, at max it will go till AL plus BL minus one, right? Is there anything that we are missing in this code? No, right? Everything is correct. Okay, let's let's quickly see a dry run on, on uh, an example. Let's say that we have an array A, uh, which is one, three, four. Then we have B, which is two, 
six, seven, eight. Okay, and we are constructing the resultant array here. So first we are checking. Uh, first, these two are uh, i and j are fixed here. Okay, so we are comparing that a i is less than b j. Yes, so we put a i inside this. So one comes here. We increment i. Then we check that bj is less than i, so we put bj here, and then we increment j, so j comes here. Then i is in, uh, then ai is put here, and then again ai is put here, and now array a is exhausted. So this condition is met, and now we will break out of this loop. What is the resultant here? Resultant is only having one, two, three, and four. Now the elements seven and eight of array b. Are not included in the resultant. Okay. So this code is not sufficient. We need something else. Okay. <clears throat> this will. This is only going to work if if both the arrays are in sync, right? If we are picking one element from array, the other from array B, right? If if one of the arrays exhausted is exhausted before uh, the other array, then the answer that we are getting is wrong. So what should be done? Can I say that if one of the array is exhausted, we can directly copy all the remaining elements of the other array to the resultant? Can we directly copy them? If one of the array is exhausted, that means that the last element of this exhausted array was smaller than the remaining element of the other array. Then only we will be exhausting this array, right? So if that is the case, then all the remaining Elements which are present in the other array, which are already in sorted order, can directly be copied here. Right. So we will just add after after this while loop, we'll just have to add two more if checks. One of them would be that if array A is exhausted, which means that uh, I has reached till the length of array A. In that case, what we can do is we will copy all the elements of array B. To array C, so we can directly copy without any comparison. We can say C K is equal to B J increment J increment K. Okay. Similarly, a very similar condition will have to be written for J as well, and these two conditions are going to come just after the while loop ends. Okay. So here, what we'll be doing is we'll be checking uh, j if j is equal to uh, length b, which means array b is exhausted. Okay. So in that case, what we'll be doing is we'll be copying all the elements of array a. Okay. So here we'll have i till i is less than Uh, the length of array A. Put all the elements of array A inside C, right? So, is is this thing clear, guys? Right? So, what what we are doing here is that if array A is completely exhausted and there are elements which are left in array B, we are copying all the elements one by one in the resultant. And same thing is being done here for array A. Okay. Now this code is complete. So is everyone now clear with how to merge two sorted arrays and what is going to be the time complexity there? We are going to do exactly order n operations, right? Because if uh, both both the arrays, uh, let's say, have got length n and m, then in that case, the time complexity is going to be this, right? Which is linear in our case. And if we are actually having an array of size n, and then we are dividing it into two parts, then one of them is going to have a size n by two. The other will also have a size n by two. So, what is the total number of comparisons that we are making? That is exactly same as order n. Okay, we are making linear number of comparisons, right? <clears throat> okay. So now, if if this thing is clear. Let's come back to uh, to the previous problem that we had. That we have to sort the array of size hundred uh, using a method which does not work on a size hundred array. Right. So what we did is, although it it cannot process an order n square operation on size hundred, but it will definitely process an order n operation. Right. Because this is way smaller than uh, the n square operation. Right. 
so what we are doing here is we are dividing it into two parts now if you have observed if when we divide the array in two parts we are reducing the number of operations uh, or the number of times this method is being called or uh, not not the number of times this method is being called but the number of actual operations that are uh, being done there we are subsequently reducing them right because initially we had a array of size 100 so if you directly calculate it Uh, this is going to be order 100 square right now if you have reduced this you reduce this to size 50 this becomes order 50 square 50 square is way less than 100 square right so dividing the array is actually giving us uh, like this this method has got a huge potential right if if you just uh, div- if you are dividing it in a single step you are reducing from 100 square to 50 square right maybe Two into fifty square. Okay. If you divide it in further steps, can we further reduce the time complexity? वो एक story है ना वो तो सबने सुनी होगी कि एक राजा था जिसके बेटे जो थे वो आपस में लड़ते झगड़ते रहते थे. तो उस राजा ने क्या किया कि एक लकड़ियों का बंडल लिया और अपने बेटों को दिया. उसने बोला कि यार इस लकड़ी के बंडल को एक साथ सारी लकड़ियों को तोड़ के बताओ तो उसके जितने भी बेटे थे लेट्स कि उसके चार बेटे थे चारों में से एक भी बेटा सारी लकड़ियों को एक साथ नहीं तोड़ पाया ओके तो राजा ये बताना चाहता था उनको कि यूनिटी में कितनी स्ट्रेंथ है राइट तो चारों में से एक भी सारी लकड़ियों को साथ में नहीं तोड़ पाया फिर उसने बोला यार इनको अब आधा आधा कर लो और फिर ट्राई करके देखो नहीं हो रही है तो और उनको सबको अलग अलग करके जाओ और एक एक लकड़ी को तोड़ो तो जब इन लोगों ने एक एक लकड़ी तोड़ी थी उनसे टूट गई तो यहाँ पे कहानी का जो लेसन था वो ये था कि यार यूनिटी में बहुत स्ट्रेंथ है लेकिन इसका एक दूसरा लेसन भी है कि अगर आप डिवाइड कर देते हो प्रॉब्लम को इफ इफ यू एज्यूम दिस बंडल ऑफ स्टिक एज अ प्रॉब्लम एंड द प्रॉब्लम दैट यू हैव टू इज टू ब्रेक दैम तो जब सब साथ में है यू आर नॉट एबल टू ब्रेक दैम बट इफ यू आर इफ यू आर सेपरेटिंग दैम यू आर एबल टू ब्रेक दैम राइट सो वी आर डूइंग द एग्जैक्ट सेम थिंग कि यार सौ नंबर साथ में थे We are not able to sort them, but अगर हमने उनको break कर दिया fifty fifty के group में, now it is very easy to sort them. What if कि हम इसको और break करते जाएं? Fifty को हम और भी छोटे उसमें groups में divide कर सकते हैं, right? तो एक काम करते हैं fifty के twenty five twenty five के groups बना लेते हैं. Right? So now we have divided the array, which was initially of size hundred, into four groups of size twenty-five. Right? So we can further reduce the time complexity. What if we keep dividing it, keep dividing it, till we are only remaining with a single element? Right? So we will we'll just keep dividing these sub parts, and we will do this till we are left with. Exactly one element in every part. Now the problem is that I have to sort this exactly one element. Initially, the problem was that we have to sort an array of size hundred. We divided it, divided it, and we kept dividing it till we are left with exactly one element. Now, if you have to sort an element, uh, if you have to sort an array of size one, how much time is it going to take? Do you need any computation there? you don't even need any type of computation right this is going to be an order one operation an array of size 1 is already sorted correct so you don't need to do anything what you need to do is only merging this array of size 1 is already sorted right this array of size 1 is also already sorted the only problem that we have is merge them if you merge them you produce a sorted array of size 2 This is again two sorted arrays of size one. You merge them and you produce a sorted array of size two. Now you have two sorted arrays of size two. You merge them and you produce you produce a sorted array of size four. And in this way, just by merging, now sorting is totally removed from the picture. This is only merging, right? So now, can you understand the power of this simple order and code that we have written here, right? the two pointer code that we have written here this is so powerful that this can sort the whole array without even doing the sorting so we are only merging now from 
single elements we get this part which is sorted then we get this part which is sorted similarly this will also be sorted and then we merge them and similarly this will also be sorted and then we finally merge them to get an array of size 100 which is in sorted order does this whole thing make sense to everyone is the idea of merge sort clear to everyone what are we doing in merge sort we are just we are dividing the array in we are dividing the array in two parts in every step we'll keep dividing it in two parts till we get an array of size one and we already know that array of size one is already sorted so we don't need to sort it we only need to merge it with the other sort uh, with the other sorted array okay <coughs> Uh, okay, now we have a question. Ki, uh, in this case, uh, instead of dividing it, we should have also used quick sort, right? Is is there any uh, downside of using quick sort here? Quick sort can also be used. Quick sort has got a time complexity of n log n, but but that n log n time complexity is not the worst case time complexity. That is the average case time complexity. In worst case, quick sort will do order n square comparison. So in worst case, quick sort is going to be same as same as your given function. And we are optimizing for the worst case. Merge sort gives you the power of doing the sorting in order n log n. We'll, we'll just see how, how we are arriving at n log n in each and every case. No matter how badly your input is input is sorted, uh, input is uh, configured. Right, because you are not choosing in in quick sort. What happens is you are picking a pivot and then you divide the array. Right, so the complexity depends on which element is being picked as a pivot. Here, it is totally agnostic about the current state of the array. You are always going to divide it and merge it. Right. Okay, let's let's quickly see how we are getting this n log n here. So if if we are dividing an array of size n till we are getting arrays of size one how many steps are going to be there how many steps are going to be there in this tree so let us quickly form a tree so we initially had an array of size n inside this uh, in the first node now we have divided it into two sub arrays of size n by two and now these two will further be divided into uh, sub arrays of size n by four and so on how many steps are going to be there? How many levels are going to be there in this tree till we get an array of size one? How many steps are going to be there? <coughs> See, in, in every step, we are dividing n by two, right? In the first step, we had an array of size n. This is reduced to array of size n by 2. This is reduced to array of size n by 4. This is reduced to array of size n by 8, and so on. Finally, we are getting 1. Okay. So, how many times are we can we divide it by 2? Are you guys able to see this? That the number of levels in this tree is going to be exactly equal to the number of times. Uh, number of times we can divide n by 2. Does this make sense? For example, let's say that if we have first n 16, tha, right? So in the next case, uh, in the next step, n 8 will be, in the next step, n 4 will be, in the next step, n 2 will be, in the next step, n 1 will be. So the number of steps in this tree is going to be exactly equal to how many times are we able to divide n by Two. Is if, if I want to find out how many times I can divide a number by two, what do I call it in mathematical terms? This is called log. Log base two, right? Log base two n gives me the number of times I can divide n by two, right? So this is nothing but log base two n. So how many steps are going to be there in this tree? There are going to be log base to n steps. How many operations are we performing in each merge operation? So there are log base to n steps. And in each step, 
in in each step what are we doing in each step we are performing an order and operation because we will also be merging them right so this is an uh, uh, an array of size n by 2 this is an array of size n by 2 we are also going to merge them so merging is going to cost order n in each and every step because in each and every step there are going to be n operations for merging so what is going to be the total time complexity total time complexity is going to be order n log n theek hai is is this thing clear to everyone <clears throat> now this is your merge sort okay this whole thing that we saw is your merge sort okay if merge sort is clear to you quickly give a thumbs up dhasu sir ke video dekhe hain kisi ne एक बार क्लास के बाद सब लोग धासु सर गूगल कर लेना ठीक है अगर धासु सर के वीडियो देखे हैं तो वैसे ही महाकाल के आशीर्वाद से सब लोग हम सब कर दो अगर ये समझ आ गया तो ठीक है ठीक है तो मच सॉर्ट का कोड कैसा होगा दिस इज गोइंग टू बी एग्जैक्टली सिमिलर एज दोड ऑफ क्विक सॉर्ट क्विक सॉर्ट के कोड में हमारा क्या था कि सो इफ इफ यू रिमेंबर द क्विक सॉर्ट कोड यू हैड एन एरे राइट एंड इन दिस एरे व्हाट यू डिड वाज फर्स्ट यू फर्स्ट यू डिड द पार्टीशन सो यू हैव एन एरे यू सिलेक्ट अ पेवर्ट यू पार्टीशन द एरे एंड देन यू कॉल द एग्जैक्ट सेम फंक्शन ऑफ क्विक सॉर्ट इन द पार्टीशन मर्ज सॉर्ट का कोड भी एग्जैक्टली वैसा ही हुआ बिकॉज यू आर you are solving you are dividing it into sub problems and whenever you are dividing a problem into similar kind of sub problem you can use recursion and recursion is a very very powerful tool to actually reduce the size of your code right so itna sab jo humne discuss kiya hai wo char line ke code mein ho jayega kaise hoga so if you if you want to write a merge sort code let's quickly see the pseudo code okay so we'll be uh, we'll be taking an array in the input and since since we are always having a sub array right so a sub array can be represented by a range this is starting from a point and ending from a point so we will just to process this sub array we'll also be keeping a range which will let's say is start from left and ends at right okay and this range is going to be valid so uh, till when we have to do the operation we have to do the operations till we are left with exactly exactly one element okay based on the range how can we def, how can we decide whether we have exactly one element so we are having this array l is here r is here how can i decide whether this array has exactly one element if this array has exactly one element then l and r will point to the same location so the value of l and r should be equal in that case so we should be doing this till we have one array uh, till we have one element left in the array which means that we will be performing the merge sort if l is less than r because if l is less than r that means that we have more than one elements in the array kyunki agar ek hi element hoga to l and r to same hi jagah pe point kar rahe honge right now inside this what we do first we find the middle point of the array so we will have a mid and we will say l plus r by 2 okay after this you have found the mid now call the same function here and same function here because now we want these two arrays in sorted order so we will sort this sub array starting from l ending at m right so the first sub array is this one which starts from l ends at m the second sub array second sub array that we have is going to start from the next element so this element is going to be m it is going to be present at the index m plus 1 kyunki m wala to pehle mein ja chuka hai right so this will start from m plus 1 go till r 
okay we have sorted both the arrays now what what is left now we will merge both of them okay how do we merge we call the function that we have written earlier we'll merge okay so uh, the function that we have written earlier in this function we have taken two different arrays as input right now can we modify the same function to take a single array and take the ranges so instead of taking two different arrays i am taking a single array i will take i will take the left point the r point right point and the middle point so now one of the uh, one of the array a is going to be from l to m the array b is going to be from m plus 1 to r so either you can just quickly copy them uh, inside the merge function or maybe you can also uh, partition uh, partition them here and then send in the merge function okay so uh, you can send this array and then you can send the ranges this is one thing or what you can do is you can create two different arrays left sorted and right sorted and then you can send these two separate arrays inside the merge function whatever suits you you can do that and this is it this is the code for merge sort itni sari jo humne iske piche philosophy padi that is compressed in exactly three lines sort the left part sort the right part merge them this is it फिर ये रिकर्शन में जाएगा जो लेफ्ट पार्ट को हमने कॉल किया है वो फर्दर डिवाइड हो जाएगा फिर वो अपने लेफ्ट पार्ट और राइट पार्ट को सॉर्ट करने भेज देगा वो भी फर्दर डिवाइड होते रहेंगे कब तक होगा ये जब तक रेंज की साइज एक से ज्यादा है जैसे ही वो एक एक एलिमेंट मिलता है विल स्टार्ट रिटर्निंग जैसे ही रिटर्न करता है तो हम क्या करते हैं मर्ज करना शुरू कर देते हैं दिस इज इट ओके इज द मर्ज सॉर्ट क्लियर टू एवरी नाउ using two extra array will not increase the space complexity that is a very very good question okay so time complexity se to ab sab clear hai right time complexity is order n log n what about the space complexity what is going to be the space complexity so this whole code is not taking any extra space apart from the recursion stack so recursion stack is going to take some space for the for storing the function calls but in the merge function that we have written right the merge function that we are using is actually creating an array of size a plus b so this array this step is going to cost some extra space apart from the recursion stack right so recursion stack is already there the length of uh, the size that you need in recursion stack is going to be same as the height of this tree which is nothing but log n so log n space to theek hai kam hai kafi lekin this is step the merging space uh, merging step is going to take order n space right so overall space complexity is going to be order n theek hai ab if this is clear तो महाकाल के आशीर्वाद से हम सब कर दो सब लोग ठीक है now let's see a very very good question which has been asked in multiple companies including amazon including facebook uh, including goldman sachs okay the problem says that you are given an array theek okay. hai you have to find you have to find the number of pairs in this array so you are given an array you have to find number of pairs in this array such that a of i should be greater than a of j where i is less than j so i and j are indices 
if the value of a i if the value placed at index i is greater than a of j then i should be less than j so you have to find the number of such pairs let's take an example then it will be clear so let's say that uh, the array is 1 3 2 4 5 7 okay how many such pairs in this array are present where uh, uh, where we have a, uh, where we have a larger element at a smaller index तो वन के साथ तो ऐसा कोई भी पेयर नहीं बन रहा बिकॉज ऑल दी रिमेनिंग एलिमेंट आर ग्रेटर देन वन राइट थ्री के साथ ए ऑफ थ्री ए ऑफ सो लेट्स आल्सो राइट द इंडाइसेस ए ऑफ वन इज ग्रेटर देन ए ऑफ टू सो दीज टू आर एक्चुअली फॉर्मिंग सच अ पेयर राइट सो वी हैव गॉट वन पेयर विच इज थ्री कॉमा टू थ्री इज प्लेस एट इंडेक्स वन टू इज प्लेस एट इंडेक्स टू राइट एनी अदर पेयर so apart from two all other elements are greater than 3 apart uh, and then for two we don't have anything for four we don't okay so answer in this case is going to be one because we have exactly one such pair where the first occurring number is smaller than the uh, the later occurring number okay a of i is greater than a of j but the index of this element is smaller than the index of this okay is the problem clear to everyone ठीक है हाउ टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम नाउ लेट इस टेक अनदर एग्जाम्पल सो यू गैस कैन कीप थिंकिंग टिल देन आई विल जस्ट राइट डाउन अनदर एग्जाम्पल सो लेट से वी हैव वन uh four five and uh two three seven if this is the array now how many pairs are going to be there so we have got four and two is one such pair four and three is also such a pair then we have uh five comma two and five comma three all these are the pairs yes basit akram that is absolutely correct okay so let let's start with the brute force solution what would what should be the brute force solution brute force is that what i just did that was the brute force right you start from one number you pick this number you select it as ai try to find a number in the remaining array which is less than this this selected element so there is no element here which is smaller than this so then i pick the next element and try to find smaller numbers in the remaining array so i have found 2 and 3 then i pick the next element and i again do the same process so i found two more elements and then i re repeat the same same thing for the remaining elements what is going to be the time complexity here time complexity is going to be order n square right kyunki हर एलिमेंट के लिए वी आर लुपिंग ऑन दी रिमेनिंग एन एलिमेंट्स ओके सो इफ इफ यू आर डूइंग टू लूप्स व्हिच आर नेस्टेड लूप्स सो देन द टाइम कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी इज डेफिनेटली गोइंग टू बी एन स्क्वायर इफ बोथ ऑफ देम आर रनिंग टिल एन नाउ इफ 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 लेट्स से सो सम ऑफ यू हैव एक्चुअली सजेस्टेड द करेक्ट अप्रोच इफ आई डिवाइड दिस एरे इनटू टू पार्ट्स ओके now if there is an element uh so i i am dividing this array into two parts and i am also assuming that the two parts are sorted okay so this array has been divided into two parts and the two parts are sorted okay so if if i am merging these two parts so the same thing which which we did in the merge sort that i have got two sorted arrays this is the array a1 or let's say this is called uh, call this as array a and this is array b okay when i am merging these two arrays if i pick an element from array a then that is okay because array a is supposed to have a smaller number but when i pick an element 
from array B. What does it tell me? So if I'm merging these two array in a common array, so first I compared one with two. So I pick one, right? If I'm picking one, that is not satisfying this condition because the element at a lower index should have a higher value, right? If I'm picking two, is it giving me some information? So if two is greater than one, right? Or, or, or sorry, if, if two is smaller than the currently selected element here, right? Because the right, uh, the left pointer here, the I pointer here is at J, uh, is at four, right? And the J pointer is at two. So if two is smaller than this number, can I say that two will definitely be smaller than all the numbers in this array, all the remaining numbers? Can we say this? Assuming that these two arrays are sorted, right? If these two arrays are sorted and two is smaller than the smallest element of this array, then two will definitely be smaller than all the remaining elements as well, right? So when I am picking two here, when I am picking two here, I can directly say that two will definitely form a reverse pair with these two elements, right? So I will have a pair as four, two. I will also have a pair as five, two, correct? Now, when I have picked two, I again move the J pointer here. So now I am comparing three with four. Again, I am able to see that three is smaller than four. If three is smaller than four, can I say that three will definitely be smaller than all the elements in the remaining array? Yes, because this array is sorted. So three will also form these pairs with all the remaining elements, okay? So are you able to see that the merging step that we did in the merge sort algorithm is actually able to solve this problem very efficiently. Whenever we are merging the two arrays, if, if, the, uh, if the smaller element is coming from the right side, that, that means that we get, that means that we get, we get these reverse pairs how many reverse pairs? The number of reverse pairs is going to be equal to the remaining numbers in the left array, okay? So if you have to solve this problem, this is a very, very commonly asked interview problem. This is also present in your test, okay? So if you have to solve this problem, you just have to write the merge sort algorithm that you have written. And in that algorithm, in the merging step, here you will have to write a condition that if AI is less than BJ, then this is totally fine. But in the else case, if if your second if the element from the second array is smaller, then you will increase the number of your reverse pair by how many uh, by, how, by how much are you going to increase the numbers? If this is your array A and currently your I pointer is here, right? And this is your array B and let's say your J pointer is somewhere here. If this bj is smaller than ai, then all these elements, all the remaining elements in the array are going to form the reverse pair with this element. So you will add all these remaining arrays, which is nothing but the size of a minus i, right? These many elements will be added to the merge form, uh, to the reverse form, okay? Uh, okay, so now Santosh has a very, very good question. After sorting, are we not changing the index of original array? Yes, we are definitely changing the index of the original array. Let us, let us again, uh, let us again quickly see this whole thing once more, okay? So let us say this is the initial uh, order of all the elements, okay? Now, when I'm saying that we are sorting, since we are using merge sort, what does merge sort guarantees? Merge sort guarantees that when you do the final merge step, you will be having two separate arrays which are sorted, right? So when we are comparing the reverse pairs between these two arrays, the relative order of elements inside these arrays had changed, right? The relative order inside these arrays has definitely changed, but there is no swapping till now between these two arrays. So if you are counting that two is going to form a reverse pair with five and four, you haven't actually changed the position of two with respect to these elements, right? Any change is inside here and any change in the position is inside here. That is why merge sort is going to be uh, going to solve this problem, right? So 
what we are saying is that let us consider this problem as a sub problem and try to count what are the number of inverse pair between all the elements of of this array and all the elements of this array so these inverse pair will be counted while merging these two okay now there might be some inverse pair in this sub array as well so that those will be counted when you do the merge step in this array right so whenever you are merging two arrays you are counting the number of inverse pair between them and all the other relative to all the other elements their order has not been changed right so here you get 154 then let's say you get 15 here you get 4 right here you will be getting 2 3 and then you get 7 now you will count what is in so let's do one more level of division okay now when you are merging these two you will count what is the total number of inverse pair in this merge so total number of inverse pair here is 0 right this is also giving 0 because this is a single element now the the inverse pair of this section has already been counted now even though you have changed the order whether you have changed the order or not changed the order does not matter because the inverse pair have already been counted now you will uh, now you will be merging these two arrays so when you merge these two arrays you will realize that 4 is smaller than 5 so you will be having one inverse pair in this case so this whole is going to have one inverse pair okay so all the inverse pair of this sub part has been counted although the order is changed but that doesn't matter right similarly when you are merging these two the number of inverse pair are zero right now again when you are merging these two again the number of inverse pair becomes zero now when you are merging these two arrays uh, the top most sub arrays then you first check two uh, with all these so you, so uh, so what you get is two two inverse pair for two then you get two inverse pair for three and then you get zero inverse pair for seven okay so how many inverse pair are going to be there total 1 plus 2 plus 3 for this case okay so although we are changing the order but that is not uh, affecting the overall answer okay because all these groups are mutually exclusive so first you uh, calculate the answer in one group then you calculate the answer in another group and then you calculate the answer between them while merging okay so will you guys be able to write the code for this the code is going to be exactly same as merge sort the only difference that 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 code will have is it will uh, you will have to keep adding the number of inverse pair in this step okay <coughs> what if the divided array is not sorted if the divided array is not sorted then this algorithm will not work yes this should be two not three right then this will not work but since we are using merge sort so that automatically guarantees that the sub arrays that we are going to have are going to be sorted when we merge them so if if they are sorted then you can count the inverse pair okay cool so i hope all these things that we have discussed in the class are clear to everyone okay now uh, if if you have understood merge sort clearly you can quickly find out what is the best case time complexity what is the worst case time complexity and what is the average case time complexity what is the best case if the array is sorted if the array is sorted will we divide the array if the array is already sorted will we will we follow the whole procedure yes we are never checking whether the array is sorted or not right we are following the complete procedure every time right so best case remains order n log n what is the worst case no matter what is the initial configuration of the array if you are following this procedure right you are, you are totally agnostic about the current state of the array you are doing this you are without doing this without even seeing at the array right so worst case is also going to be n log n 
so if in each and every case this algorithm performs uh, sorting in order n log n then what will be the average case average case will also be order n log n okay so merge sort uh, technically is an algorithm which which is fast which is faster than all the other sorting algorithms in each and every case but still it is not preferred always quick sort is preferred reason being that this involves order n extra space okay so this is the biggest downside of using this algorithm if if you have plenty of space then this is the best sorting algorithm to be used okay <clears throat> cool so now it is time i hope you all enjoyed the session you all learned a lot from this we'll we'll be continuing the classes and uh, please solve all the problems the first person who is going to solve all the problems is going to get a t-shirt please don't forget that okay if not for learning at least solve the problems for winning a t-shirt okay and uh, if you haven't watched the video of dhasu sir please go and do that after the class or jaise dhasu sir bolte hain mahakal ke aashirwad se like the video okay i will now end the broadcast good night everyone